thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's episode. PIA provides a secure, reliable VPN connection. Click the link in the description below to receive 82% off the first two years, plus four months of free service. We here at Journey to the Microcosmos headquarters have been very excited about this ciliate, which is called a Legendrea Loyase. James, our master of microscopes, found it in a lake, which made him just one of five people in human history who had ever found this organism. In our last episode, we talked about how his discoveries managed to reconcile the contradictions that had gone unexplained in the observations previous scientists had made. What we didn't talk about was the fact that James and his collaborators, Dr. Dimitra Andreo and Professor Henoveva F. Esteban, were the first people to gather genetic data about the Legendrea genus, thanks in part to their Legendrea loyase friends. Now, when we say genetic data, we could be referring to a lot of different things, in part because genes are such an extensive, varied landscape that humans are only in the early days of being able to describe. Genes contain the instructions that tell our cells how to make the proteins that carry out our lives as they drive chemical reactions or produce key structures or pass along information. And those instructions are written in the language of DNA, a molecular double helix whose components spell out individual bits of a message, like letters building up into a word that builds up into a manual for life. To make that language comprehensible to us, scientists use the letters A, T, G, and C to represent the chemical bases that link together to form that code. But within every living organism, whether it is us or the organisms we are watching, that code is a living, churning, evolving force that enshrines our identity in relation to so many others. In our journey through the microcosmos, we have often seen the way genetic material and the use of phylogenetic techniques reveal new ways to see an organism's identity or to upend a set of relationships we thought existed in the microcosmos. Like when scientists realized that the organisms they had gathered together in the taxonomic group of amoeba were not really so closely related after all. The idea is simple. Let's compare organisms and see if we can figure out, based on their similarities and differences, how closely related they are. We can and have done this with microscopes and extensive descriptions of what different microbes look like and act like, but like we said, genetics has often upended what we have gleaned just through observation. But to study organisms at the genetic level, we need their DNA which means that we need to be able to wade through all the bits and pieces lying within their tiny bodies to pick out something even tinier. Something that we cannot just dig out with a shovel. So, how? How does James manage to get the precious DNA from Legendrea loyase and other ciliates he is interested in studying? He starts by grabbing the organism, separating it from the crowd in a manner similar to what you can see him doing here with some other microbes. There they are, just chilling until James appears with a tool called a micropipette that draws them right up. After taking the ciliate he's interested in, it's time for James to give it a little bath to make sure that it's clean and remove any other organisms that might cloud up the results. He starts by squirting the organism into a clean drop of water and letting it swim around for a while, then grabbing a new clean micropipette. James repeats that process again and again and again and again, each time using a new clean micropipette to draw the organism into a fresh clean drop of water. The goal is to get that ciliate very, very clean. And that means James sometimes has to leave them swimming for as long as 30 minutes in that drop of water. And that's not just to scrub their outsides. The insides need to be empty of any ciliates they might have eaten that are now taking up residence inside of a food vacuole. Yes, even a master of microscopes has to wait around a bit for a ciliate to poop sometimes. 
When he's done and the ciliates are all cleaned up, James freezes them in a tiny tube, getting them ready for the next step, isolating the DNA. The process is pretty simple. He takes the tube out of the freezer and lets it thaw out. And then he puts it back into the freezer and lets it ice up again. Just like the washing, this is a repetitive process. Over and over again, the organism is frozen, then thawed, frozen, then thawed. Each time that happens, the cell changes a little bit. Ice pierces through the membrane, and the insides of the cell begin to disintegrate. Buried in the cellular soup that remains is the organism's DNA. Now, separating that DNA requires a technique that you have probably heard a lot about in the past few years, PCR, which stands for polymerase chain reaction. The goal of PCR is to take a very small amount of DNA and then make many, many more copies of it. During the pandemic, we relied on PCR to find fragments of viral RNA in our mucus and then amplify it so that those small quantities of genetic material could be detectable. But PCR is so important that even describing it as a tool to save lives during a pandemic feels like we are very much underselling it. It is one of the tools whose premise is so simple that it can be used and adapted for any number of applications. Since its discovery in 1985, PCR has been fundamental to the work of scientists who are doing everything from hunting down proteins to engineering new technologies to creating new medical therapies. For today, though, PCR's main use is to gather small segments of the Legendrea loyazae's DNA that can then be used to find where it belongs taxonomically. And as with the previous steps that James had to undertake, there is a lot of repetition. The ciliate that was cleaned over and over again and then frozen and thawed over and over again will now have its contents heated and cooled in a mixture that will tear apart the strands of DNA and find the part that James wants to amplify over and over again. With each repetition, the number of DNA fragments goes up exponentially so that in the end, James is holding a tube full of them, ready to be sent off so that a machine can determine its sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's for scientists to study further. With his prized DNA, James was able to find a family for the Legendrea loyazae, the family Spathididae, order Haptorida. He was even able to find a sibling, Epispathidium papilliferum. They even have similar protruding structures, making their family resemblance apparently beyond the genetic similarities. This is a relationship that the early observers of Legendrea loyazae might not have been able to infer, and even if they did, the tools to verify them didn't exist. Each time we visit the microcosmos, it is with knowledge and tools that we did not have before. That is why it matters to discover again what someone found once before, to dig through old texts and familiar ponds, because buried deep within, there is always something unknown remaining to be found. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's episode. PIA provides a secure, reliable VPN connection, but you might be asking yourself, what is a VPN? Well, a VPN is a virtual private network that encrypts your internet data, hides your IP address, keeping your information secure and protected. But it also allows you to watch streaming content that might not be available in your area. PIA has a next-gen server infrastructure covering over 83 countries and in each and every U.S. state. Let's say you're in the mood to cozy up with some hot cocoa, sit by the fire, and watch the classic film White Christmas. Well, if you're in the U.S., that's as simple as loading up Netflix and typing in White Christmas. But if you are outside the U.S., you will not find White Christmas when you search for it. But thanks to PIA, you won't have to miss out on a Christmas classic because you can access U.S. exclusive content no matter where you are. Private Internet Access works with all major streaming services, so you have access to all your favorite content 
everywhere in the world. And PIA is available for all platforms, and one subscription protects up to 10 devices at the same time. You have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like the product or if it doesn't meet your expectations. And right now, PIA VPN is offering Microcosmos viewers their best deal yet an 82% discount and four free months when you use the link piavpn.com slash microcosmos. The names on the screen right now, they are the people who allow us to make Journey to the Microcosmos and to continue diving deeper into our world, how we understand it, the work that people have done throughout history and the work that is being done right now. We are so grateful to all of you. If you would like to join them and become one of the reasons why we can do this, you can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, and look, why wouldn't you? You can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby. 